Hey everybody, welcome to week seven. We've just finished cubism and gone over architecture. I learned a lot about modern architecture this past week and had a lot of uh, interesting viewpoints about creativity and uh, how that plays into all designs, even architectural designs, and how modern architecture, our skyscrapers today have evolved. Anyway, this week, week seven, we're going to be working on uh, the uh, moder modernism as far as the different movements that followed cubism. Uh, uh, if you remember how cubism led to new ideas about uh, space and how to manipulate form, uh, things are no longer realistic. You can see that. Everything is becoming more and more abstract. There's some parts that look realistic, but you have to look a little, little harder to recognize the intent of the artist. Forms are more distorted, sometimes flat. No interest in perspective. It's not important. Uh, with the uh, particularly the futurists, the Cuba uh, futurists that followed Cubism, they were more interested in capturing motion and uh, dynamic movement. Uh, they celebrated industry and um, modernism, speed, military might. Uh, so now in the modern period, artists are seeking uh, to look at more at the uh, the modern man's uh, sort of. Uh, state of, of living in, in a modern industrial society and what that means and how sometimes there's a feeling of loneliness even though there's a lot of advancements and improvements uh, cities are becoming more crowded so there's a sense of even though you're in a crowd you're sort of in an isolated situation. You're going to meet some artists like de Curico uh, who's beginning of the metaphysical where life uh, looks at sort of mysterious images and of course, artist Chagall, the Russian artist Chagall, uh, sort of moving toward more uh, uh, images of dreams and fantasy, sort of fairy tale. So these are all new um, artists moving and experimenting further with modern ideas. So in week seven, we're going to look at, uh, as I said before, uh, the different isms that followed on cubism. Uh, so if you would go to the weekly learning module for week seven, you'll see the different topics there that we're going to uh, cover this week. I want you to be sure and watch the two videos there, Modern Art Mu Movements. It'll cover most of the movements that we're going to go over this week. It'll be very helpful. And then also uh, another video on the futurist and, and what their uh, philosophy was. So those are two good videos to, to be watching course this week you still have a discussion forum so you be sure to check uh, the discussion tab for this week. I want to also point out that the study guide for exam one is here. The list of terms, artists, uh, different movements you need to know are listed here in week seven. Don't forget week eight is going to be exam one. So if you go over all these terms and understand them, a lot of them were part of the written assignments, uh, the terms you've done before. So they shouldn't be too difficult or you can go back through those assignments and find out the answers you had for those. So please check this list of study terms for exam one that are, is, you'll find in week seven. This week is week seven module and that should help you. There's also a, a written assignment for week seven which covers the terms for the week as well. I also want to remind you all that uh, to be working on your museum art analysis uh, paper, uh, be thinking about the one work of art you chose for when you went to the museum and uh, begin doing research, uh, look at the art closely, uh, begin to think about how you're going to describe that work of art, and how you're going to come up with a thesis for the paper, how you're going to build your paper around this particular thesis, what you're trying to prove. In most cases, uh, art history papers are written around, uh, the uh, thesis for art history papers are written around what the style of uh, the defining the style of the piece, not, not a report on the artist, uh, not a report on the cultural period, but a report on how the art, the work itself, reflects its style. And there's a lot of evidence you can find by just describing the piece and talking about the different compositional elements uh, and all the different uh, parts of the, of the work. And then you can certainly introduce background on the artist in a cultural context uh, context to support your paper. So keep that in mind and just be thinking about that because I'm going to begin to uh, contact you and start asking you for an outline of your paper to see where you're at. So be focusing on 
uh, thinking about writing that paper so it isn't such a big deal in the end and you have to do a crunch. So uh, I want to just wish you much success for week seven and I think you'll enjoy going through the new styles of art we're going to be covering that just continue to be more abstract and more modern. I think you'll enjoy that. So I wish you all the best for week seven. If you have any questions or concerns about the assignments or your grades, please do not hesitate to contact me. You can always get in touch with me by email. So I uh, wish you the best for this week and here we go. Take care. Oh, by the way, we're on daylight savings time, so we might have an hour less to work on the course today. Take care. Bye-bye.